As I have already mentioned, this particular session is not about MySQL or not about RDBMS or NoSQL or Cassandra. This is just to understand how exactly the distributed data store works. To understand that, you need to see this diagram. In here, I have a couple of machines here, okay? So I call them as node, and all of these cluster of node or the collection of node is what comprises of my distributed data store. And how they function is basically each node is responsible for saving or holding part of the data which we, which we want to uh, save in our database. Unlike in MySQL, you understand that how do we partition and how uh, you know part of the data is saved in the different machines and the master save you know, strategy and everything, right? In here, there is nothing like master or slave. Everyone is treated equally, like every machine or every node is treated equally, and every machine is given a main responsibility of saving some part of the data. And they also have the secondary responsibility of keeping data backup of some other node. Basically, this guy is kind of responsible, responsible of holding some data, and this is his primary job. And also, this guy has a secondary role of keeping this guy's, you know, part of this guy's data as a backup and also part of this guy's data as a backup. Why do we need to do that? If, in case this machine goes down, we have the part of this data saved in a machine. And similarly, we might have the remaining part of the data saved somewhere in some other machines. So we still have the data backed up in the, in the collections of machine. So that way, we can always ensure that even though a machine goes down, we have the data saved in our, you know, some of the machines in our cluster. And the, the, the logic of you know, saving part of the data in the DB in different machines is called as data partition. And that's what actually happens in any of the NoSQL you know, database or uh, data stores you take. It all actually works in the same way. Even though they have columnar or, you know, uh, different kind of key value pair or document kind of document based you know data stores everywhere it's basically designed in this way where the whole database is kind of split into multiple parts and those parts are saved into the different machines and they are called nodes and everyone is kind of treated equally and, and there's nothing like master and slave everyone is of high importance all the time and if this node goes down, it's fine because we have the backup of the data and some of the nodes we can still capture that part of the data. You might be thinking now, where does all of these nodes or these machines um, will be? So these machines say, um, can be this machine can be in US, or this machine can be in Asia, and this machine can be in somewhere in Arab or somewhere. You can have that kind of uh, configuration or you can have you know three machines uh, top three machines stay in one continent and other two continent, uh, other two machines in different continent. Or you can always have all of these machines stay in one place also. It is up to you guys how you want to um, have uh, place the nodes in different locations or regions. So now let's learn what are the, you know, uh, actual responsibilities and uh, how does the rebalancing of nodes uh, works in case of... Um, failure or if you want to scale it up. Say, I just mentioned the responsibilities, right? The primary and the secondary responsibility. Um, say, for example, I'll just give you a, one more example. Say, um, I'm going to save some, some data into this node. So let's name uh, the nodes as one, two, three, four, and five. So consider uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to update um, some data. I'm going to write some data into this node and how the system decides where to write the data, um, I'll explain that later. So just to uh, explain you guys what is the primary responsibility and secondary responsibility, I'm going to you know just explain with an example. Second so consider I want to save some numbers. Save one, two, and three. So the primary responsibility of this node is to save this data. Say the secondary responsibility of this node is to save some part of this data also. So as a second responsibility, this node keeps one as a backup. Maybe this node keeps two as backup. Maybe this node keeps three as backup. Not just one copy. The other node might also keep one 
which is the primary uh, data which is staying in node one, um, this one might be uh, you know kept back up in two different nodes. Say, so why do we need to do? So not just one, actually two might be residing over here also, and three residing over here also. So these are all actually backups, and this is the primary data. And similarly, all or each and every nodes here will have its own primary data. And similarly, this guy also will keep the backups. So why do we need to keep multiple copies in here? Say, um, even in case we lost these two machines or these two machines got corrupted or these two machines are dead because of some power failure or something. Say these two machines are not in the picture. Now still, we have all the data backed up or, or say for example, if this machine went down itself, then we can retrieve the backup from this machine and this machine itself, like one, two, three, can be retrieved from these two nodes. What if this node, all these three nodes went down for some reason, all of these machines went down. Still, with the help of these two machines itself, we can still record the data. Say one is here, two is here, and three is here. So that is why the distributed data store is so you know, resilient and uh, fault tolerant, and um, it always works no matter how many nodes goes down, or what ha whatever happens. So this is how um, the primary responsibility and secondary responsibility is best explained. So the second thing is rebalancing. Um, so what is rebalancing? So now you might be thinking, how does these nodes uh, know what is its responsibility? Like what part of the data I should save or um, what part of the data I should back it up, right? All these uh, questions are still unanswered. To answer that, if you know consistent hashing, that is what uh, plays a very important role. All of these machines are kind of placed inside a ring. Um, so I'm just going to draw a ring across these nodes. Okay. What consistent hashing does is say, similarly, similar to primary key, every NoSQL component is kind of having uh, its own key called as partition key. It's just like primary key, but this key is kind of used to decide where this particular data goes. Say, just, just to give an analogy in terms of our DBMS, so when we sharded the data in our DBMS, what happened was, say, A to, say, G, go to this cluster, and G to I, uh, all the data is present in this particular, not cluster, this particular machine or database. And I to say Z, all of this data is present in this particular DB. So based on that partition key, we were able to understand or you know um, get an intuition of where the data presents or which DB it presents, right? Similarly, so here what happens is consistent hash ring will um, automatically decide say, for example, hash ranging from one to say a thousand will go, um, it, it just names, say this node will be keeping the data of the partition key whose hash turned out to be value between one to thousand. And this guy keeps the data from say thousand to two thousand. And this guy is something like three thousand to four thousand. Similarly, like 5,000 to 6,000 and 6,000 to 7,000. So what happens now is, now these guys know that I have to keep the data whose uh, you know, partition keys hash is between the range 1 to 1,000, right? Similarly, all every guy knows his responsibility. Now, say I want to insert some row, um, a record, say some value here, say name something like cat, now it's key, some, say something like partition key is one, okay? Partition key is one. Now we need to put, um, you know, pass this particular partition key into hashing function, hash function, and the value of this output is used to figure out what node that particular value goes into. Say the value turned out to be, uh, say, 2,500, for example. Now this particular data cat will go to the node here. Um, I'm sorry, actually. Let's keep this to, keep this range to 2,000 to 4,000, okay? 
So now this particular data should go and stored in between uh, in the node three because this range, uh, this particular value is present in between this range, 2000 to 4000. I'll just rewrite it, 2000 to 4000. So this particular data will go and reside in this particular node. And similarly, whenever you want to insert new data, take the partition key and then pass into hash function, whatever the output you get, that hash output, check um, in which node that particular range present and then insert the data into that node. So that's how the, um, the primary responsibility of the nodes is figured out. Okay, now how does the you know, secondary responsibility is figured out? That depends on your configuration. So in Cassandra, there is something called as replication factor. That particular configuration will tell you how much, how many times the data should be replicated. What is replication means it's kind of backing up the data. Say for example, if my replication factor is set to three, that means that every data which we are saving in particular node should be copied um, another two times so that the total number of data which is there in the cluster should become three. So basically it tells you how many copies of the data should be present in the particular um, cluster. Say if the consistency level as I mentioned is three, so we just need to back up in two places so that the total number of copies will become three. One in primary node, say for example, this data is present in here. So this is the primary node of uh, this particular data. So we have to back it up another two times. So how does the nodes know that, um, what is the data which I need to back it up? Say for example, we save this data onto this particular node, right? So the cat actually present over here. So the cat is present over here because this was the primary responsibility. This node's primary responsibility was to save the data of the hash of the partition key ranging from 2000 to 4000. So it saved this data cat over here. How does the other nodes know that who, who, who is the guy who should keep the copy of this cat and another two copies? So there are different strategies. One simple strategy is maybe like the next, um, available nodes in the ring clockwise or something like that. So, so the next available nodes are four and five, right? So these guys will actually keep the copy cat over here and this cat as a backup copy. So, so these two are the backup and this is the primary uh, you know, copy of the data present over here. And similarly, uh, if, if, if I want to write one more thing like dog, say the partition key is two, it, the hash of the two turned out to be say something like um, 6,200. In that case, this node uh, has a range of 6,000 to 7,000. So I know that 6,002 falls in between this range. So the data dog will be saved over here because the primary responsibility of this node was to save the dog. So the dog replication or the copy of the dog will be saved in this node because the next two nodes. So dog over here, dog over here. So it, it just worked that way. It's a combination of you know, consistent hashing plus a different strategy of backing up makes the distributed data store um, more reliable and resilient. So this is how actually most of the distributed data store works. They all use kind of consistent hashing plus different strategy to back up. So one advantage that I just uh, I, I already showed you that even though some of the nodes went down, the data will be saved in other nodes. So now let's talk about uh, rebalancing. What is rebalancing? So if I want to scale it up, scale this particular cluster up, say for example, this cluster with five different nodes can handle up to one lakh queries per second. Now I know that next year, or uh, this is the season where there will be more customer visiting to our website, so I need to scale it up. What do I do? I need to add more nodes to this cluster. So what do I do is, so add more nodes into the ring. So I just added two nodes. Now I need to assign new range of keys to these two nodes. What happens is, now it's all reshuffles. So as soon as I, I add these two nodes to the cluster, every node in uh, every nodes in my ring or in the cluster will learn about you know addition of new uh, nodes to the cluster 
So immediately, they what do they do is they reshuffle the responsibility between themselves, and it automatically gets a new range somewhere, say something like five thousand five hundred to say six thousand five hundred. It's it's kind of automatically happens that these guys will get their ranges. So how does they learn about it? So there is something called as gossip. So just like how people talk about some other person. We do gossip, right? So the same thing happens between these nodes. They all of these nodes, they will be keep on talking between um, each other to understand the status of each and every node because that is very important because that's how these guys are. Every nodes in the cluster knows what is the primary responsibility of this guy. So so basically, every node in the cluster will know everyone's responsibility. Because they'll be, you know, sending back and forth the gossip messages to each and every node. Basically, it's like this guy is talking to all of this node. This guy is also talking to all of the nodes by sending the messages to everyone. This guy also does keep on sending the messages, and that's how everyone is kind of up to date about everyone's responsibility, everyone's primary responsibility, and you know, secondary responsibility. And that's how, as soon as we add nodes to this cluster. Everyone will get to know because this guy is also kind of part of the node, uh, the ring, and the cluster, right? And these guys will also start to gossip, and everyone will get to know that there are two nodes being added to the ring, and they automatically reshuffle the ranges. Uh, they and they automatically assign the primary and secondary responsibility, and sometimes the data which is already saved here will also be transferred uh, or loaded to this particular newly added node. And also to this particular newly added node. So this is a positive case where we add the nodes to the cluster. Sometimes it happens that um, the, some of the machines might go down because of some reason. Say, for example, this machine went down, okay, because of some power failure or hard disk failure. And this happens. That's why we want our you know system to be distributed because we know that no machine can be up and running forever because they will sometimes fail, right? And, and it happened so that this particular machine went down. So now what we need to do, because there was a primary responsibility of this particular node to save the data between say 5,000 to 6,000. Now who is the guy who is primarily responsible? Now immediately the gossip message uh, from this node will not be sent. That's how everyone in the node will, uh, in the cluster will get to know that this guy is not actually sending the messages. They try to talk to them no response has been you know, heard back from this particular one. That means that these guys will automatically understand that this guy is no more present in the node, uh, sorry, in the cluster or the ring. So they automatically reshuffle the ranges and also redistribute the backed up copy. Say the cat was distributed in this node and this node, uh, maybe somewhere, right? Actually, here and here, right? So as soon as this node went down, Somehow the responsibility was maybe taken by this particular node in the ring. So uh, primary responsibility of this, uh, the cat data was sent to this particular node. So now this guy will be the primary, uh, primary node to hold the data between some of the range. Basically the reshuffle will be happening um, without you guys knowing it. Um, so there are different things happening. I can't uh, basically explain everything because this is not specific to Cassandra. Uh, this is just for you guys to understand what happens internally uh, in the distributed databases. So distributed does, data store doesn't just mean no SQL. There are different kinds of distributed data stores that are there. Even you can consider Redis, which is also distributed and it holds the data. And you can consider that also as a distributed data store. And it has its own mechanism of saving the data. Uh, it also kind of uses hash table um, and internally a lot of different kind of strategies to save the data. And one more kind of distributed data store is HDFS. This is a file system, but it also kind of does the same same thing. Uh, it also have a lot of different machines in which uh, it keeps the backup of the data in, in, in kind of blocks. Um, so whenever you upload the file, it actually breaks the file into 64 MB blocks and each of these blocks will be saved into different machines. Um, just like how we just saved the rows, in case of HDFC, it will be saving the piece of the file in different machines so that even some of the machine goes down, that piece of the file or the slice of the file will be present in one of the machine and somehow it get to know which machine 
has that piece of the data or slice of the data uh, of the file and then they collect together to create a file. So that's how the HDFS is kind of designed. Um, I also mentioned to you that uh, in kind of distributed data store, um, there will be no master or slave, but there are exceptions where um, the design is such a way that they always, uh, or they, 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 they do want master to handle all of the machines in the cluster. So one example is HDFS, as I mentioned, it has a master node and all the other machines where actually the data presents. Um, that's fine, I think. Um, but one thing you need to remember is when you have a master, um, that is kind of single point of failure because if that master goes down, there's no one who can actually take care of all the machines or the kind of slaves or you know children of the master. Um, so that we need to have a coordination service like Zookeeper or some other kind of algorithm which actually checks uh, if the master is alive or not. Uh, if the must, if the master is dead, similarly, you know, immediately we have to give out the responsibility of the master to some other machine so that the whole cluster will be up and running. Um, I think um, I think th this is the information you guys need to know uh, just the base for the basics of uh, distributed data store. I hope um, this will actually help you to give an insight, uh, get an insight of um, how the distributed data store works. For better understanding, I suggest you to go and learn about the internal working of the, of the Cassandra. Um, it's very beautiful. There is a lot of different algorithms and um, um, you know different strategies are used, like um, compaction. Uh, there is something called mem table. Um, there are different concepts. I don't want to explain you know, um, explain now, but uh, I, I surely recommend you guys to check out the internal working of Cassandra that you will know how the distributed data store works. I think uh, that's the end of this particular uh, video of uh, distributed data store basics. Uh, if you like this video, please um, like and comment, or if you have any suggestion, please do comment in the video. I, I surely um, try to reply to the comments and adopt the recommendation you guys are giving. Um, thanks a lot and don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about the channel and everything. Thank you.